introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Lotta Eriksson. I'm from Sweden and I'm a SSI freediving training director. I've been freediving for almost, what is it now? Like 20 years almost, not quite. And now I'm teaching mainly, not so much competing anymore. 2002, I started freediving. And how? Yeah, it was in the hub, actually. I was here on vacation. I was not a freediver. There was no freediving in the hub in 2002. I was here on vacation, and I always had this dream of swimming with dolphins, so I had to hold my breath longer. I used to go and swim with the dolphin in Nueva, and I just wanted to stay under the water with the dolphin longer. So I had this idea, like, I knew, like, you could somehow learn to hold your breath longer then i was here on a five week vacation in 2002 i think it was i met another freediver because right at this time some freedivers in europe had figured out that there is this weird place called the blue hole in daha maybe we should go and try it out <clears throat> so i ran into one freediver that was in daha at the same time as me that was offering courses like you know your homemade course so I said, oh, cool, I want to do that because I want to learn to hold my breath longer. I didn't know it was a sport. I didn't know you could compete in it. I didn't know there were different disciplines. I just wanted to stay with the dolphin longer in the water. I didn't want to dive deep. That seemed scary, but I was totally hooked. I, I could not stop. And actually, I fell in love with the static in itself. Just that, that was like going to bliss, you know? couple of minutes and then you are in bliss. It was the most amazing feeling ever. So I was sold on that already before we went in the water to try to dive. And he was saying, yeah, you will be able to do 10 meters. And I said, that's crazy. I cannot do 10 meters. I don't remember how deep I went in the, in the course, but I'm sure I did 10 meters, maybe 12. I don't know. But I did over five minutes static <laughs> already oh. then, like where it's like third try, five minutes. And I, I never stopped. I, I kept wanting to hold my breath that was it so as soon as I went home to Sweden again I, I found the free diver in my city and then I was training and he worked at the public pool yeah so I had free access to go training we were training before work three times a week all like I never stopped I was that was it very nice yeah and what did you actually become a free diving pro so what was the turning point what what make you decide to say it was a natural progress, I would say, because, of course, I, I started because I wanted to swim with the dolphin. Then I figured out there in the first course that there is something as, that is called freediving competition. And obviously, I broke the Swedish women record with two minutes on my third try. So the guy was like, you know, I have to do it. You have to go to competition. You can take the record. And I was like, well, that could be fun to have a record once in your lifetime. So I kept free diving and I kept competing and I was competing a lot. I had all the Swedish records and then all the European records. And then at the same time, parallel with this, me and my husband were thinking of moving to Dahab. So the whole thing with moving to Dahab didn't really have to do with free diving. There was no free diving here yet, really. Yeah. So, but we had fell in love with the place anyway. So we were planning to move here. And I was competing for a couple of, you know, like well, maybe it was two years and then we moved here and he was running a dive center here. So it just felt natural. And now that I'm here, I'm training, I'm competing. I, I now know a lot about free diving. I could teach some other people. That was still totally without any organization at the time. There was barely any, even Ida didn't have full on developed courses or anything. Yeah. So most people were just doing their own thing. So I kind of started like that in my husband's dive center, teaching what I knew, which is nice, but not so good in this end, because when you haven't done proper courses or haven't done, like I didn't have a lot of issues i didn't have equalizing issues for instance uh, and i was really good at holding my breath and so on so then you have a customer suddenly having a problem and you're just like what is it hard to equalize i didn't know like you you don't know how to solve it and then also what happened is that you try to teach a beginner every single thing you know from the start and mm -hmm. you forget that there is a process 
And what I'm doing now, I do because I've done this for two years already and they are still beginners. So it takes a while. A lot, a lot of the teaching in the beginning was teaching myself how to teach, you know? It was really interesting. I have a customer out. They just couldn't do a duck dive. And I'm thinking, but it's like, why? And then I'm thinking, okay, what is it that I'm actually doing? And I said to the guy, wait a second. And then I lay in the water and I was like, I'm really thinking, what is it step by step that I'm actually doing so I can explain it to, to them? Because before that, I was like, yeah, you just dive down. <laughs> I realized that it could be niche. I, a lot of self, like I learned a lot from starting teaching like that. And then eventually I got like involved in writing materials from, for an agency and making proper courses and so on. Uh, which is all based on the actual uh, experience from teaching the beginners and understanding what am I doing and what is it that I need to tell them and how do I explain it? So, yeah, now it's easier for everybody else because there are the, the agencies, there are the courses with everything in there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel again and again, which I was doing in the beginning. But to be a good freediving instructor, do they need to be also like a record holders or good in competitions or? Absolutely not. No. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. This was the only way very much to, to freediving. Okay, you, spearfishing has always existed. Never been interested in that. Uh, I kind of jumped into it straight into competition. It just happened like that. Uh, you learn a lot, yeah, for sure. But you don't learn about how to teach. You learn how to dive yourself. And it depends on which uh, issues you're facing. Uh, most, we all have our barriers and some people have equalizing barriers or uh, pressure barriers or just fear of depth barriers or whatever it is. You learn from them. And then you have something to share with your, your student. So people who just are great and they just, never had really an issue and everything is just easy and then they start teaching I don't think they they really understand other people's issues and it's very very common when not all of course there are great deep divers that are great teachers but all great deep divers are not uh, they tend to over teach too complicated things to begin with they don't see the process in that way that I, I'm not here to tell them everything I know on the first two days, of course. Yeah, it doesn't work. So I think having a program to follow and the agencies who have the developed programs, they make sense. And, and it, it makes it much easier for students progressive way. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So yeah. actually what makes the hub is the free dive destination well originally i think because there is a couple of other big freediving destinations in the world now but the blue hole is the reason first mm -hmm. that's why the freedivers came early to see what is that because finding depth is a major importance for a okay. freediver and finding depth where there's good conditions mm -hmm. you know depth without currents, waves, storms. And if you don't have to go in a boat, you know, can it be any better than that? You jump from the shore, you swim 15 meter and you have 90 meter depth. Like it's not many places in the world you can do that. So in that sense, Blue Hole is like a, the perfect, perfect, perfect free diving spot. Now it's too shallow already for many people. <laughs> Wow. But it, it, for most people, it is not, not too shallow. As many, many world records has been done there. Is it also uh, the atmosphere, the, the surrounding? Maybe it's... Sure, of course. I mean, Dahab has a spirit in itself. I mean, when I came here, I fell in love with Dahab and wanted to move to Dahab. And it had nothing to do with the freediving. Mm -hmm. you, you get stuck and fall in love with Dahab anyway. Yeah. So that was just an extra plus. I just happened to find these two things. I find the freediving passion and I, I love Dahab. I moved here. I started a, a freediving school and then it started booming eventually because more and more people understood what a great place it is for freediving. 
so yeah, the atmosphere is amazing. But if you just look at it practically, and it's close to Egypt, like, sorry, Europe. So easy to get here and you don't need a boat. Conditions are the same. It doesn't matter. You can dive all year around. Even if it's really windy, you can still dive in blue holes. Like it cannot get much better than that. In many other places where they dive deep, they go out with boats and they drift dive, which I, I mean, I grew up as a free diver here. <laughs> I think that's very risky. I don't know how you go and do that. Like I wouldn't, you know, it, it's many more risks that way. So it's a very safe place and to dive. Was it difficult to be a female freediving instructor and a dive center owner in that? I have to say no, it was not difficult. I have got that question from other people too, because me and my partner, we're both girls. Yeah. So we're running with two women running a, own, the only freediving center in, in Dahab for many years. And people ask that and we just look at it and say, I, I couldn't say because I wouldn't know how it would have been if we would have been men or if another partner would be a man. Like I never felt that we've been treated different because we were women by, you know, whatever landlords or any other things you need to deal with when you're here. And also I never felt like we had less customer coming because we were girls, not at all. Okay, we were competitive. We had a lot of records. We were well known. There was not so many freediving centers officially in the whole world at the mm -hmm. time. Like if there were five freediving centers in the whole world that was well known at the time, maybe. So no, I mean, I don't think that has been for many, for most people, I don't think that has been a, a question of like, oh, but they're women or not at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you since you taught yourself so many uh, freediving instructors, uh, can you please tell me some of the characteristics of the successful freediving instructor? I think, I mean, you you should have experience. It doesn't like diving experience. That helps a lot. Doesn't mean it has to be some kind of record depth or or something but of course you should feel confident enough that you can dive deeper than your students or you know comfortably so having experience not just doing the course of course course instructor course like keep diving and you you need to have your yeah you need to experience different things it's good to have these blocks of whatever it can be that you have to overcome you know, go through this process. You have so much more to give to your students and share with your students and easier to understand your students when they have issues, maybe. So yeah, keep, keep training and always know that yes, because you just because you finished your instructor course, you don't know everything and you're not suddenly the God that doesn't have to listen to anybody anymore. Uh, it's a process. And, and you keep learning. That's why I really like the idea of having dive centers, like free diving centers, yeah? Because the new instructors, you start working, even if your goal is to open your own center, which is a very nice goal, stay and work in another center for a while. You learn so much about how to run a center, but you learn from the other instructors that have been working longer, you know? Sure. They, the students have so many different issues to be solved and and even if i've done this for 20 years almost sometimes you get surprised it's like oh my god this is the first one i never saw this before but for the new instructor there's going to be many of these things like oh my god what do i do now but probably some of the more seasoned instructors know that so having a good team working with the team listening to each other and be open-minded and keep keep learning is super important what is the secret of the success of uh free dive dam we were first there was no free diving centers almost uh, and i but i think it's because you you want to share your passion yeah i i loved free diving and why i started teaching is because i wanted to share it with other people it's it's amazing you know and teaching beginners are amazing like i i many times feel like that's the best 
because the change is so quick and, and you can see in their eyes when they get it like it's like a they come up from the dive and there's this smile up to here and it's like okay they got it you know and and it makes you so happy uh when people feel that you know that you're really there and you're enjoying it with them i think it's really important because in the end of the day is the word word of mouth that will make you successful or not yeah we 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 have returned you want returning customers you want them to to speak good about their experience so having a passionate team now of course i'm not the only instructor there is several instructors working with us it's very important to have a good team and a good atmosphere in the working team because if it's not the customer will also notice yeah now we just moved to a new place and we're so happy because what was lacking a little bit in the other place, even if we were there for 10 years, <laughs> we loved it. But now it's more cozy, the areas, the socializing areas, you know, people hang around, they stay, they, they chit chat, they talk, the customers, the instructors, like just, it should be a hub, a place where people want to be, not just go and do the course and go out, you know, mm -hmm. it's nice to, to hang there and share experiences or, or stretch on the roof or whatever you want to do. Yeah? So good atmosphere is super important and well-trained instructors, of course. That's very good. I totally agree. If you have some time for yourself now to learn something, what would that be? I used to do some arts like a little bit when I was a teenager, a little bit older and then that just, I stopped. I mean, I'm not super talented, but I really like it. Uh, so I figured now, it was getting really slow after a while. So maybe I pick up painting a little bit again. Nice. So yeah, so I'm doing that and I'm a little bit excited. I'm thinking of starting doing some woodworks and stuff. I like these kind of things. I didn't do for so many years, so it's still in a thought process, but I'm also thinking how I can combine it with my freediving passion. Like, can I, you know, make uh, jewelry, freediving. Nice. Something That's like very that. nice. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> so, it's just out of my personal curiosity, are you happy and satisfied with with the free diving world at the moment? I mean, when it comes to equipment or education, or you see still a lot of development which need to be done. I think it's developing quite fast, and of of course it can be more. <clears throat> I mean, equipment wise, there's a huge difference already from what it was when I started and I think that that's going to keep going like it, it's going that way uh, already which is is nice education wise the same when I started there was no proper education no materials no this and that I, I mean it's growing so much and I really like the idea of that free diving is not mainly for people who want to compete and be, do record national records or competition and stuff it, it, it's not that's actually a small part of it. It's amazing. I love it. It's fun. But that's not what the majority will do. And I think it's really getting there now because when I started, we were very few and then it was growing, but it was really still growing mainly competitively, so to say. And now you see, I mean, most customer who come, most people who do the courses, even up to instruct the course, they don't go and compete. Mm -hmm. That's not the mainstream thing to do. I think the education is spreading nicely and there are, the agencies are doing a good job on giving proper education for anybody who wants to free dive, not necessarily compete. It's a little bit different with that. And maybe, maybe it should, could be even like separate. I mean, I think everybody needs to start at the same point. Yeah, you're a beginner, you need the same. But maybe there could be like a string towards what you need to do more of if you want to be a competitive freediver or, or what you should do more if you want to take teach, photos and or... just a, yeah, teach, but also just enjoy the reef or the marine life, you know. Yeah. Uh, maybe it could be. At the moment, it's, it's not. It's pretty much one sequence. Cool. 
So, Lotta, this is it. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you for letting me talk to you. No, it's a pleasure.